This conference will now be recorded. Okay, fine. Today I'm going to talk about the adrenal gland. So it's a very fantastic hormone. So adrenal gland, as all of you know that uh, this uh, a pair of adrenal gland lies uh, on kidney. So each one weighs about to 10 grams. So this adrenal gland, if you see the transfer section, it contains outer capsule, outer layer capsule, followed by cortex and inner medulla. So again, the outer cortex is divided into three parts, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis, and inner middle. So uh, capsule, outer one is capsule, followed by cortex, so inner medulla. Again, the cortex is divided into zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis, and inner medulla. So this cortex, again, this cortex secretes the three different types of hormones. So the overall the adrenal gland secretes the, since I see, nearly synthesis and secrets the, nearly the 50 different types of hormones. So out of 50, some of them are having the very potent biological, or some of them performs the uh, important biological functions. See, take for example, melocorticoids, glucocorticoids, sex hormones. So all these are released from the inner, uh, the, the cortex. So inner medulla secretes the catecholamines, non adrenaline and adrenaline. So menlocorticoid example, allosterone, glucocorticoid example, cortisol, and sex hormones, androgen and estrogen. So here inner medulla secretes the catecholamines. So if you see a little bit detail, so the zona reticularis secretes androgens, zona fasciculata synthesizes the glucocorticoids, and zona glomerulosa secretes secretes and synthesize the menorlocorticoids. So this overall, so menorlocorticoids, example, aldosterone and corticosterone, and glucocorticoid, cortisone, cort uh, cortisone, and androgens, estrogen, testosterone, catecholamines, epinephrine, and non-epinephrine, and inner medulla. Secretes catecholamines, epinephrine, non-epinephrine, and uh, 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 peptides. And peptides like somatostatin substance B, these are synthesized from the inner middle law. And if you see closely observe, let's see this one. Closely observe the zona glomerulosa secretes the aldosterone and corticosteroids. And uh, next to zona fasciculata, we synthesize the cortisol and cortisone. And inner zona reticularis, we synthesize the estrogen and testosterone. And mainly, so you see this one, zona glomerulosa, as I already said, it secretes mainly aldosterone. Aldosterone, important function. So we are not going in detail, but uh, uh, superficially, I'm talking about this uh, function. Later, we'll see in detail. So the mode of action, mechanism, all these things. So first, let us see the, the main functions. Why you have to read, why you have to study the signal gland. So the menlocorticoid, mainly aldosterone, increase the urinary excretion of uh, uh, potassium and increase reabsorption of sodium and retention of water. For this, menlocorticoids, especially aldosterone. Then coming to the cortisol. Cortisol, you say no, uh, the cortisol, it increases the gluconeogenesis and thereby it increases the blood sugar level and uh, it retention of water and you mainly use it as the anti inflammatory effect. Whereas the zona reticularis, which creates the androgens. So it's a sex hormone precursor sex hormone precursors let's see this one as all of you aware that this uh, hypothalamus releases the corticotrophic release hormones so these are tropic hormones releasing hormone in uterine hormone all these are released by this uh, hypothalamus so hypothalamus it releases the corticotrophic releasing hormone so this corticotrophic releasing hormone acts on the adrenal hypophysis what's under the name adrenal hypophysis and or otherwise uh, anterior pituitary so this adeno you know, anterior pituitary gland uh, releases the adenocorticotrophic hormone. So this adenocorticotrophic hormone later it acts on the target organ adrenal cortex. So so the classical definition of hormones they are synthesized they are synthesized somewhere 
and transport via blood and it acts on the <coughs> another kind of tissues the best example is this it, uh, i'm repeating once again the hormones are the chemical messenger they are secreted with one kind of cells and they are secreted somewhere and transport via blood and acts on the and it shows its impact on the another kind of cell so you see this one corticotrophic is hormone which is secreted from the hypothalamus so hypothalamus so it stimulates the antidepressant gland to release the adrenocorticotrophic hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone acts on the adrenal cortex so the adrenal cortex the adrenocorticotrophic hormone facilitates the synthesis of the adrenal cortical hormones so in this we are talking about cortisol so we are talking about now cortisol so the cortisol so it's a 21 carbon compound okay so this cortisol when you are under stress your body respond responds by releasing a hormone so it's a mainly we call it as a stress hormone when you are under stress the cortisols are released so it's a cortisol is a steroid hormone so it is inside from the adrenal cortex so it mainly it regulates the carbohydrate metabolism and uh, anti inflammatory effect on the body so the main important purpose of this cortisol it's a it is as a drug in uh, anti inflammatory conditions and uh, it uses as a anti inflammatory drug next one is the this cortex this uh, adrenal cortical hormone that is a cortisol which regulates the carbohydrate metabolism and this cortisol is a 21 carbon compound the cortisol is a 21 carbon compound so as all of you aware that the the presence of this any the menylocorticoids glucocorticoid and sex hormones the parent compound is always cholesterol the cholesterol see how many carbons the 27 carbon compound cholesterol is a 27 carbon compound so see students there is no need to buy out all these things so just you try to remember the parent for this aldosterone cortisol and um, testosterone is all this for the for this parent compound is the cholesterol so this cholesterol uh, so, so see, as already know that this is a 27 carbon compound after liberation of the six carbons from the cholesterol the pregnenolone is formed so with the help of the desmo uh, desmolase so now this hydroxyl is a key enzyme see 21 alpha hydroxylase 11 b hydroxylase and uh, this is a, a 17 alpha hydroxylase and the three um, this, this hydroxylase enzyme 21 alpha hydroxylase these are the key enzymes in the synthesis of the uh, aldosterone cortisol estrogen from the cholesterol so this alpha hydroxylase enzyme activity is stimulated by the adrenocorticotrophic hormone so as all of you know that the adrenocorticotrophic hormone comes from the antiripetritic gland so this antiripetritic gland hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone stimulates the adrenal cortex okay so this adrenal cortex produces the what are the product of uh, adrenal cortex produces the aldosterone progesterone estrogen so this uh, adrenocorticotrophic hormone stimulates the alpha hydroxylase as already said this alpha hydroxylase is a key enzyme key enzyme so now again the cortisol secretion so there is a diurnal circadian circadian uh, release of the cortisol let us see this one if you closely observe the release of the hormone is very, the, the release of hormone between uh, the evening times between 6 pm to uh, 12 am is very low then 12 am onwards slowly rises slowly rises it, it reaches the peak during the morning times so and slowly it goes down after 12 o'clock it goes down so now so let's see this one this uh, level of this cortisol is very high during the morning times so diurnal variation is there the secretion of this uh, cortisol hormone diurnal variation is there and it is low during the night times and it is very high during the morning times let's see this one so <coughs> hypothalamus hypothalamus synthesis trophic hormone that is the corticotrophic release hormone this corticotrophic now we are going to see the regulation of the cortisol secretion so hypothalamus uh, secretes the corticotrophic release hormone this corticotrophic release hormone acts on the antiripetritic gland to release the adrenocorticotrophic hormone this adrenocorticotrophic hormone acts on the adrenal cortex 
and the signal from the signal cortical cortex, the cortisol release, synthesis of this cortisol takes place. As already said, this alpha hydroxylase enzymes are uh, stimulated by the adenocorticotrophic hormone. So now this uh, cortisol acts on the target organ. So target organ mainly, this target organ, it increases the blood, uh, blood fatty acid level, blood amino acids, blood glucose, all these levels are increased. At the same time, the stress. The stress stimulates the hypothalamus to release the cortical releasing hormone. This cortical releasing hormone acts on the anterior pity to regulate the adenocorticotropic hormone. Adenocorticotropic hormone, as already you know, that it acts on the adrenal cortex to, uh, to facilitate, to uh, encourage the synthesis of the cortisol. And at the same time, diurnal rhythm. Diurnal rhythm. As already said, the morning times, uh, cortisol, level, cortisol level reaches the peak in the blood. So that's why diurnal rhythms also facilitates the release of the cortical release hormone from the hypothalamus. So once this cortisol reaches the maximum, the peak level, the cortisol itself inhibits the hypothalamus to it inhibits the release of the cortical hormone from the hypothalamus. So it's the regulation of cortisol secretions. So, because let's see, we'll talk about the little bit mechanism of the action of the how this uh, hormone, so especially this uh, hydrophobic, hydro, hydrophobic hormones, so, so the, the steroid hormones. So, the steroid hormone, so it easily crosses the cell membrane because you know that the, the cell wall is made up of the plasma membrane, it easily crosses the plasma membrane. Now, this uh, hormone. Hormone binds the receptor, it forms the hormone receptor complex. So, this hormone receptor complex is present in the either in this hormone recept receptor for the steroid hormone. Sometimes it is present in the nucleus, and for some hormones, uh, this receptor for this uh, receptor for this hormones are present in the um, uh, cytoplasm itself. So, now this receptor hormone complex now again it crosses the nucleus. And it binds with the specifically hormone responsible element. Now we have to talk about again transcription and translation. See, for the binding of any protein, you need to have the, uh, the it has to bind to the specific site on the DNA. So that is the hormone responsible element. So this hormone response, once it binds with the this hormone receptor complex to hormone responsible element to element, the mRNA synthesis takes place and mRNA ribosome. And tRNA all together, and it, it facilitates the release of the protein or protein, and this protein shows the biological effect. And uh, this hormone response element is, uh, is is not similar to the, all the hormones. So it varies. Glucocorticoid response element is different. Menlocorticoid response element is different, and thyroid hormone response element is different. So each uh, hormone has its own response element. So this hormone receptor complex, it will go on binds with the specific responsive element. So the specific element is a specific uh, response element is varies from hormone to hormone. It's not same to the all the hormones. So now why you have to read this cortisol? What's the role of uh, cortisol in our body? Why you have to read this cortisol? So this cortisol mainly, so mainly, so see this one to decrease the sensitivity to pain okay so this is steroid for steroid drugs they may as i already said this cortisol all these are used as a anti-inflammatory drugs so it decreases the sensitivity to pain sensitivity to pain and at the same time it has got some uh, bad effects that is it decreases the blood sugar level and suppresses the immune system and uh, decreases the serotonin level and increase in the blood pressure and uh, heightened memory and attention. So the cortisol, one positive point is decreases sensitivity to the pain. All rest of all are negative points. It suppresses the immune system and increases the elevates the blood sugar level and heightened memory and attention and it increases the blood pressure and decreases the serotonin level. So only positive effect is the it decreases the pain sensitivity. And then coming to the what's the impact of this cortisol on protein metabolism. So on protein metabolism, so here the especially it's not good. This cortisol is not good for it causes the excessive use of this uh, cortisol, it causes severe muscle wasting. 
severe muscle wasting and uh, catabolic muscle and skin and bone okay and uh, especially the protein biosynthesis is decreased because why this protein biosynthesis is decreased because you know that the, the synthesis of protein protein biosynthesis is a continuous phenomenon in our body so mainly this cortisol inhibits the amino acid uptake amino acid uptake and protein synthesis in extra hepatic tissues <clears throat> and catabolism in muscle and skin and bone and excess cortisol it causes the severe muscle wasting and what's the role of cortisol on carbohydrate metabolism so on carbohydrate metabolism say i said to say, say it increases the blood sugar level how it increases the blood sugar level one is it decreases the uptake of the glucose tissue uptake of the glucose next one is the conversion of the glucose 6 phosphate is inhibited because uh, uh, it, it is the anti insulin action and ex and uh, it increases the gluconeogenesis in liver and excessive cortisol cortisol, cortisol it causes the diabetogenic excessive cortisol causes the diabetes you said diabetogenic and uh, the cortisol main important role of insulin insulin decreases the blood sugar level whereas the cortisol increases the blood sugar level so glucose decreases that's why it's a anti insulin hormone and uh, excess use of this cortisol is a diabetes it causes the diabetic that's it is known as diabeto diabetogenic diabetogenic then coming to the the role of uh, cortisol and fat metabolism so here the excess use of this cortisol as already said the cortisol only one positive is the it is anti inflammatory rest of all are negative effect and the excessive intake of this cortisol it causes the ketosis so what's the link between cortisol and ketosis so as all of you have that is if you take more amount of the cortisol so it causes the mobilization of fat mobilization of fat from adipose tissue so it's a lipolytic and ketogenic hormone so it causes the excessive lysis of the excessive it causes the lipolysis and it liberates the fatty acid from the triglycerol and uh, the excessive the degree it undergoes the the fatty acid undergoes again degradation uh, beta oxidation and liberates the stl coa this stl coa generally introduced by generally enters into the pca cycle but uh, the stl coa levels are if, the, if it is more than the in the uh, more the more than the more, more, more and more stl coa is produced if it is uh, exceeds the uh if it is if the levels are exceeds the more than the capacity of krebs cycle this uh, stl coa diverted for the biosynthesis of the ketone bodies so that's why excessive ketone body causes the ketosis so that's why this is one of the dangerous sign so that is the role of uh, cortisol and fat metabolism so the overall the cortisol it causes the ketosis it facilitates the release of the fatty acid from the uh, triglycerol the triglycerol which is stored in the adipose tissue and the fatty acids whatever fat is liberated this fat has undergoes beta oxidation and beta oxidation stl coa is released liberated this stl coa usually diverted for the pca cycle if it exceeds the more than the consumption of the pca cycle this stl coa is diverted to uh, diverted to uh, divert uh, diverts into the biosynthesis of the ketone bodies so excessive ketone bodies it causes the ketosis this is one dangerous alarm then coming to the cortisol effect of cortisol on cardiovascular function so it increases the myocardial contractility and vasoconstriction due to the enhancement of that column effect the permissive effect of this is called permissive effect of cortisol and then coming to the as always a repeated point so physiological effect of cortisol so it's a lipolytic hormone okay lipolytic in sense means so it liberates the fatty acid from the triglycerol and as all of you know that the, the fat is stored in the form of triglycerol on the adipose tissue so now this uh, fatty acids are liberated only glycerol portion is left and this glycerol concentrations is elevated in the blood so now this glycerol available for the plenty of glycerol now it's available for the gluconeogenesis now fat is broken down and less form due to the less glucose transport into the fat cell and redistribution of the fat takes place and the formation of the fat in trunk area and in face and less deposition less deposition of this fat takes place in muscle from extremities and uh, it causes the uptake 
it increases due to the mobilization of fat from the adipose tissue it increases the appetite and uh, that is the role of the cortisol on fat metabolism then coming to the another important role played by the cortisol in our body is the anti stress anti stress so in see in uh, in severe physical and mental stress okay so this uh, in mental stress uh, being is a said is a stress hormone so in the severe physical or mental stress the cortisol levels are uh, uh, goes up about 10 times more than the normal level and this levels are continue throughout the day and it continues levels are continuous throughout the day and moreover it activates the energy metabolism that is nothing but the degradation of fat and it inhibits the protein biosynthesis and it increases the gluconeogenesis and prevents uptake of the uh, prevents uptake of the glucose by the tissues so it's uh, mainly it activates the uh lipid metabolism and uh, next another important function played by the cortisol or body the anti allergic so it uh, decreases the histamine synthesis in mast cells and gas cells and it decreases the kinin synthesis so uh, overall this cortisol inhibits the allergic responses and this cortisol is as a anti inflammatory drug so this cortisol inhibits all stages of inflammatory process okay so mainly it has a stabilizing action on lysosomal membrane of leukocytes it decreases inflammatory chemical mediators as uh, prostaglandins and interleukins these levels are decreased and it uh, suppresses the migration of neutrophils and it inhibits the proliferation of the fibroblast in wound repair so mainly it is used in the it is used as a anti inflammatory drug so i am repeating once again this uh, cortisol inhibits the all stages of inflammatory process so it has a stabilizing action on like lysosomal membrane of leukocytes it decreases inflammatory chemical mediator as the prostaglandins and interleukin levels so interleu inter prostaglandins and interleukins so this biosynthesis of prostaglandins and interleukins are decreased and it suppresses the migration of neutrophils and it inhibits the proliferation of the fibroblast in wound repair so how does this cortisol affects the immune system so how does the cortisol how does cortisol affects immune system so this cortisol mainly suppresses immune system decreases the circulating lymphocytes basophils and eosinophils and decreases the antibody production so that's why one of the advantage is uh, this widely used in the treatment of the autoimmune disorders and the uh, disadvantages of this cortisol mainly it causes the spread of infection mainly it causes the spread of infection as tb so the cortisol is immunosuppressive and it is used in the treatment of autoimmune diseases and at the same time disadvantages is the it causes it causes spread of infection and uh, this cortisol mainly impedes the development of cartilage another important disadvantage of this uh, cortisol it impedes the development of cartilage how it impedes because it decreases absorption of calcium from the gut okay and uh, it increases the calcium ion loss in urine actually the calcium is supposed to preserve in our body because the calcium is such a precious molecule it has to preserve in our body but it causes the increase in, uh, the cortisol it causes increase loss of calcium in urine and excess to intake of the cortisol it causes the osteoporosis of bones especially but so this is the function of one then uh, the role of cortisol on gut so increase intake excessive use of cortisol is not at uh, is uh, always is not at all advisable excessive cortisol causes the peptic ulcer and what's the, let us see the what's the role of uh, uh, cortisol on erythrocytes so excess cortisol it causes the retention of sodium and water <coughs> and increase the potassium excretion and then coming to the the role of cortisol on uh, cns so excess cortisol is not at all advisable again one of the uh, consequence of the cortisol is as all of you know it's immunosuppressor it causes peptic color ulcer it's a diabetogenic okay and next it causes the psychosis it causes the excess intake of uh, the cortisol causes the psychosis so overall let us see the, the effect of excess cortisol <coughs> to the body 
so it decreases decreases the metabolism okay it decreases the metabolism and decreases immune system and it causes cycles then the depression all these things next hypertension next chronic fatigue and uh, sleep deprivation and the migraines and the tunnel vision acid reflux disease hostility hunger arthritis so because arthritis as all of you just know as i said the calcium is yes, the calcium is uh, excessive the calcium is uh, positive in the your excess amount of calcium is it increases decrease absorption of calcium and uh, so that the excessive calcium is uh, uh, positive in the urine so let us see the symptoms of the high cortisol levels so fatigue high blood pressure hypoglycemia worsening memory and concentration difficulty in sleeping okay insomnia there is nothing but insomnia and decreased sex drive and erectile dysfunction weight gain and obesity weak and immune response these are all the high doses of the cortisol and uh, what happen low cortisol levels low cortisol level so low cortisol level it should be in uh, within normal range high low both are not at all good for health so the low cortisol is seen just like the uh, high cortisol low cortisol also it causes the fatigue next uh, so here also you can you, you can see the insomnia that is difficult sleeping and uh, memory and uh, concentration levels are worsening and uh, sugar and salt cravings so sugar and salt cravings next uh, decreases sex drive depression more weight gain bone and muscle loss anxiety irritability so almost both are dangerous uh, conditions uh, the high and low both are not at all good for health then coming to the next one aldosterone cut the next we are talking about aldosterone so aldosterone aldosterone so the main role of aldosterone it causes the conservation of sodium ions secretion of potassium ions and increase the water retention increase the water retention and increase the blood pressure so the overall effect of aldosterone is to increase the reabsorption of precious ions and water in the kidney so important function of aldosterone is the reabsorption of ions and water in the kidney so just like this one so how this steroid hormone shows its biological effect so as usual the hormone the steroid hormone it easily crosses the plasma membrane and binds to the receptor it forms hormone receptor complex this hormone receptor complex crosses the nucleus where it binds with the uh, dna dna and uh, transcription and translation takes place and it releases the certain protein protein this is this uh, enzyme the enzyme which are essential for the all the uh, enzymes which are essential for this uh, metabolism all these have the increase elevates and uh, here also the menlocorticoid menlo menlocorticoid uh, uh, menlocorticoid uh, men menlocorticoid uh, uh, response element is there and glucocorticoid response is already said uh, this response element varies from hormone to hormone so let us see the the overall functions for aldosterone so aldosterone is primarily menlocorticoid and uh, the name itself indicates this menlocorticoid works to control the water and electrolyte balance and particularly by controlling the sodium and potassium concentrations aldosterone secretion in response to the high potassium ions concentration in the extracellular fluids and aldosterone stimulates the kidney cells to lose the potassium ions into, into the forming uh, the urine while, while at the same time conserving sodium so it preserves the sodium and uh, it stimulates the lose the potassium ions from the body so so it facilitates the this aldosterone facilitates the conserves the sodium and releases the potassium in the urine and uh, let's see once again so the functions uh, uh, is mainly reabsorption of sodium from the distal renal tubules and decrease excretion of potassium from the distal renal tubules and decrease excretion of hydrogen ions from the distal renal tubules and decrease the water reabsorption along the sodium and decreases the sodium content of sweat the saliva and other secretions act as a long term regulator of blood pressure it acts as a long term regulator of blood pressure and uh, the over secretion excessive secretion of this uh, steroid hormones which causes the 
कुशिंग सैंड इट्स सिंस्टिसिस लेट टॉक अबाउट कुशिंग सिंड्रोम सो सी दिस लेट सी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्मल पर्सन एंड कुशिंग सिंड्रोम पर्सन कैन यू अप्रिशिएट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्मल एंड कुशिंग सिंड्रोम पर्सन या या सो दिस कुशिंग सिंड्रोम इगेन divided into adenocorticotrophic independent cushing syndrome and adenocorticotrophic independent okay so adenocorticotrophic let us see the first one adenocorticotrophic dependent so here the pituitary adenoma adenoma which causes the cushing disease and ectopic uh, adenocorticotrophic of producing hormone or producing tumor this also causes the cushing syndrome and pituitary adenoma next one is ectopic adenocorticotrophic producing tumors so it both causes the cushing syndrome then uh, adenocorticotrophic hormone independent so if the therapeutically the levels are more corticosteroid hormone levels are administered sub more and next come to the adenal tumor so adenal adenoma or carcinoma so which also causes the is a adenocorticotrophic independent cushing syndrome so the cushing syndromes are two types adenocorticotrophic dependent and adenocorticotrophic independent so let us see the cushing syndrome so here what happened let's see the top to bottom we'll start from head and we'll go to the bottom so first one is the personality changes moon face and because of pure immune system the susceptible infection and the male's gynecomastia okay then uh, sugar levels are increases so that is hyperglycemia next is cns irritability mental disturbance central nervous system irritability and uh, the sodium uh, sodium uh, sodium fluid sodium and fluid retention takes place and uh, extremities are very thin okay and uh, and the males the gynecomastia is the, the breast looks like female breast the male gynco that is called a gynecomastia and uh, fat deposits on back uh, and uh, gastro uh, gi tract distress and uh, std ulcers are increases because of increase in uh, acid uh, levels and uh, females hirsutism and amenorrhea and thin skin okay purple stries you can see the purple stries and the bruise and petechies and small patches of blood uh, blood you can see that is the bruises and uh, petechi and uh, it causes the osteoporosis and because uh, the calcium increase in the calcium levels are uh, uh, excretion of calcium levels are uh, uh, elevates in the steroids that's why this causes the osteo porosis these are signs and symptoms of the cushing syndrome i am repeating once again the cushing syndromes is two types adenocorticotrophic dependent and adenocorticotrophic independent adenocorticotrophic dependent means pituitary adenoma and ectopic adenocorticotrophic hormone producing tumors that is the bronchial carcinoma where the adenocorticotrophic hormone independent that is the therapeutic corticosteroid administration and excessive intake of this uh, steroid hot drugs and next coming i mean next coming to the adenal tumor that is adenal adenoma or carcinoma so let's see this one cushing syndrome signs then coming to the edison's disease so the edison's disease mainly the cause for edison disease failure of a cortex to secrete the corticosteroids failure of a cortex so the cushing is mainly due to the disturbance in the uh, secretions okay over production so here the failure of a cortex uh, failure of cortex to secrete the corticosteroids are due to the so atrophic of a cortex so this atrophic due to the autoimmune diseases and the destruction of the gland during the tb and the destruction of hormone secretion of a cells in a cortex by a malignant tissue and congenital failure to secrete the cortisol and failure of the anterior pituitary gland lesions in area of hypothalamus where the corticotropic releasing hormones is produced so it's in this is mainly failure of the cortex to secrete the corticosteroids so if you start from here the atrophy of a adrenal cortex due to the autoimmune disease and destruction of the gland during the tb and destruction of hormone secreting cells in your cortex in your cortex by malignant tissue and congenital failure to secrete the cortisol and failure of anterior pituitary lesions in the area of hypothalamus where the corticotrophic release hormones is produced so these are the causes for the edison's disease let's see this one edison's disease so here let's start from uh, 
top to bottom. And uh, especially you can see the, the change in the pigmentation, the skin uh, the skin color. So it looks like a bronze pigmentation of skin. And uh, there is a change in the distribution of the body body hair, changes in the distribution of body hair. Next, you can see the hypoglycemia and uh, postural hypotension, postural hypotension, and weight loss and uh, gastric uh, gastrointestinal disturbances and weakness. These are the adrenal. Uh, the, 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 the these are the these are signs and symptoms of the adrenal uh, the adrenal and coming to the adrenal crisis here uh, you can see this uh, fatigue and dehydration vascular collapse and uh, renal shutdown and decreased sodium level and increased serum so serum potassium levels these are the adrenal crisis okay so the these are the uh, if there is any imbalance in the production of this uh, adrenal, uh, adrenal cortical hormones called the Cushing syndrome and Edison's disease. So we'll talk about in next class, we'll talk about the uh, medullary adrenal, medullary hormones. So that's the end of the story. I will talk, uh, that's the end of the adrenal cortical hormone. Next class, we'll talk about, we'll discuss about the adrenal, medullary hormones. So he, uh, that's end of this today's session. So all of you don't forget to give your attendance in the chat box. So, okay, thank you. Ah, what's your mother? Is that lap item? <laughs> <laughs>